Good morning, traders. This is Bruce at Velox Pro. If you can hear me and see my screen, just type yes in the questions. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, well, today we have uh, Daniel Scalic. Uh, he's presented uh, once before uh, with us, and um, uh, lucky to have him back again. So let me read the disclaimer first. Trading futures involves substantial risk of loss is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Uh, there's uh, just want to let you guys know of a few things before we get to the introduction for Daniel, and then I'll pass it over. I uh, just want to show you a few things. Uh, here on the website, uh, bookmap.com, you can see this is the uh, I don't know why it says two days here. It should be uh, last day um, for the 33% um, uh, uh, discount on Bookmap, and this is for the advanced version. It's uh, yearly or quarterly, so um, let's just uh, click on the pricing tab, and you can find out more about the details here. Okay, so the, the advanced quarterly, uh, and then you get it for the year as well. Uh, so you'll uh, save quite, quite a bit more with the year if, if you're interested in doing that. Um, this webinar is recorded, and I'll show you where that is. Okay, you can find it either here in the portal when you log in, um, and uh, right here under recorded webinars. Okay, and you can click for the playlist here, and that'll take you to the YouTube channel, or you can go directly here to the YouTube channel, and you can see the. Um, if you you got to scroll up to the top, and you can see the uh, all the recorded webinars this week. Okay, uh, or uh, you can just go uh, directly to that YouTube channel. Uh, I, I also want to show you or send the link here to you in the chat box for uh, Danny's um, uh, previous webinar uh, that he did with us back in February. So if you if you guys want to review that as well, okay. Uh, let's see here. A few questions already. Oh, uh, and then uh, here's uh, here's Danny's Twitter feed as well. I'm going to put that into the chat for you. All right. So you have that. <laughs> Dan, you want the uh, 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 expiration to be April 1st? Okay. Um, no, it's... Uh, well, the, I mean, the special, we've got it all set up this way for now. Um, let's see, another question. Yeah, Carl, I can, I can speak with you later uh, about that. Um, okay, uh, okay. so uh, uh, Daniel Scalic, uh, he's an e-mini, primarily uh, S&P e-mini uh, trader, discretionary trader uh, from the retail side. He's been involved in trading for about six years. Uh, you know, the last year, a couple years, he's been full time. Uh, he is a follower of Futures Trader 71 uh, and client at S5 Trading, uh, and um, uh, uses a lot of the uh, uh, same principles that uh, FT71 follows. Uh, let's see. Uh, yep, uses in the investor RT charting, um, and then trades directly from Bookmap here. So uh, uh, you can see that uh, he was also uh, or was a waiter at uh, a restaurant Per Se here in Manhattan, and um, uh, as we can see from the last presentation, uh, a lot of discipline in his trading. So uh, it's uh, excellent to see, and it's great to to uh, uh, see that transfer over uh, into this uh, very, very challenging field of trading. So uh, without further ado, Daniel, I'll just uh, turn it over to you. Cool. Thanks, Bruce. And uh, thanks for having me back. I really appreciate everybody showing up. Uh, it's really cool to have uh, such a great support here within the community. And I'm seeing a lot of your names in the audience. Um, traders I recognize and whom I've borrowed ideas from so thank you and uh, hopefully I can reciprocate here and you'll be able to take something away from this today uh, so let's let's jump right in uh, the market's back and over the past several months we've been exhaustively watching this miserably slow equity futures market um, I trade the ES exclusively and there have been many days where I'd sit here and watch the fluctuations for hours and not be able to find a single trade. And, uh, you know, even more days where I could only find one trade. 
and that's it for the session. And that's not due to my having changed anything in regards to trades or entries, uh, just the, the opportunities simply weren't there. And uh, I know that you know a lot of you have been going through the same sort of thing because we talk about it in the S5 chat all the time. Um, but uh, the past few days, we're finally seeing some action. And uh, of course, Tuesday was that trend day down. So uh, despite that welcome volume and range, uh, I don't like to trade trend days. I'm just not good at it. Um, and I don't know anybody who is to learn from, so I just stay off the mouse. Uh, but I'd like to take you through my thought process on those excruciatingly slow days and uh, show you how that translates over to this newfound volatility, which will hopefully uh, stick around for a little while. Let's see here. You got my screen? Yep, looks good. Perfect. All right, so uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through uh, low volatility, starting from the higher time frame working down. Um, I'll kind of just quickly summarize uh, how we get to the, the trading because we went over that uh, last time, so you know, I don't want to cover that again, but uh, let's move right in. So uh, here's what we've got. This is the what the market looked like as far as uh, last Friday morning, uh, around 8.45 a.m. or so right here. Okay, uh, I'm prepping for the day and completing my homework and my hypotheses. This is a 15 minute candle chart of the uh, regular trading hours session only, meaning from 9.30 a.m. until 4.15 p.m. Eastern. Um, and it goes back as far as March 6th here. Okay, so two weeks. And uh, you can see I've added two micro composite profiles. One is for this entire range of kind of balance and acceptance. And the other is for the past two days here. Uh, we got this, this push up on the raised interest rates, the Fed announcement on this Wednesday, and then this inside kind of balancing day on the, the Thursday. So as you can see, even with this, this huge push up on the Fed release, uh, which I likely considered in price discovery mode after that session was complete, is still in quite a bit of balance overall, right? Uh, which is why I extend this, this forward to just see, you know, how this is reacting uh, from what we've built these past two days in addition to this prior acceptance. Uh, so then we take it to the overnight section. And uh, I'll give you a quick rundown of this chart. Another 15 minute candle chart, but separates the uh, cash open or the cash session here from the overnight or the Globex session. Uh, on the bottom here, you can see my footnotes from the homework from that morning. Uh, just gives me an idea as to the overall global sentiment. Uh, is money generally moving into risk assets like the equity futures and the dollar index, or is there a flight to safety with money moving into treasuries and gold, et cetera? Uh, and sometimes it's mixed and sometimes everything's flat. But uh, I write this down so I can come back and check at the end of the week if the global sentiment at the time of my homework led to a certain type of day. And often it is indeed indicative. So here we can see that not too much uh, has really changed globally overnight. Uh, everything for the most part is pretty flat. And uh, I guess you could say there's a slight sentiment towards risk here. Yours down a little bit. The treasuries are flat. But... Uh, for the most part, everything's flat. Um, so then I want to see what the ES has done overnight. I'm looking at this box here. And uh, I try to get into as much detail as possible. Uh, but we covered that again pretty extensively in the last webinar. Um, so uh, the basic gist is just to examine price action uh, for the session on its own. For example, there's this uh, kind of local double top at 2380, that's interesting. I'll put it in my notes. Uh, I also want to um, examine price action as it relates to the prior RTH session. So uh, we've opened, uh, chopped sideways, tested the prior volume point of control, tested lower, pushed higher, and we're still accepting higher. Uh, and that's that's um, important to me. Uh, and then I'm also interested in uh, the volume profile shape and. Uh, how the kurtosis looks at the extremes, whether it's sharp or soft, and uh, you know, I'll note any low volume nodes or high volume nodes, and uh, things like that. And then that information is used to formulate my hypotheses. 
Uh, and so again, I'm just going to go through this quickly so we can move move ahead to the trades here. But uh, I think it's important to at least note where these come from, where the trades come from. So uh, we can always come back to this if you guys have any questions. But um, because global sentiment had maybe a slight bias towards risk and uh, we tested lower and accepted higher than the prior RTH VPOC overnight, the first typo is bullish. Um, now, in this low volatility market, uh, I only am accounting for about uh, 14 or 15 points of range. So as you can see, both hypotheses include the prior volume point of control, the 76.75 which is right here, it's underneath this black line uh, because that coincides with the two-day volume point of control, the most traded price. Okay, and uh, also both hypotheses um, include this overnight high to be tested and taken out at 80.75. Uh, now, the, there's a reason for this difference in price and uh, that's because uh, as a target level, I wanna target the lowest or the closest possible place that sellers might find price advantageous and turn around, right? But as a reversal level, I want to see that um, 80.75 overnight high resolved and pushed through by a little bit. And so uh, if we're going to chop and open up and push up to it, I want to see it push through. And the next thing we have is the LVN right here from the prior day, a low volume node. Uh, so I'm expecting that to be more of a reversal session, uh, reversal area than this uh, overnight high level itself. And uh, another thing to note about these hypotheses is that they both end with a push higher. And uh, that's due to two different reasons. Let me go back to this other chart here. So one of them is that uh, the closing swing on pretty much all of these, you'll see, is a push down and uh, a move higher. All right, chop sideways, push down, move higher. Sideways, down, higher. Sideways, down, higher. Down, higher. Closed higher every single day, right? Uh, not here, but for the most part. And then uh, the other reason that for that is because uh, we're going to continue higher on this one up to this 93 naked VPOC. And on the second hypothesis, I'm expecting a bounce on the first touch of the 67.75 level. And that goes back to that other chart as well. Uh, that's the most traded price uh, since the 6th. So for the past two weeks, that's the highest traded price, and we've pushed above it. So if we're going to pull back to it, I'm expecting that to happen later in the session, and I'm expecting the first test of that uh, to provide some sort of rejection. Uh, pretty straightforward here. My goals are developed based on the prior week's performance. I uh, always want my tick expectancy to be at least three ticks per trade. And that's an average number of ticks capitalized on for the week per trade. Um, so next, I want to get knocked out for a full stop less than a quarter of the time. Uh, this way, uh, say I have four trades uh, for argument's sake, right? Uh, one is a full stop out uh, for 16 ticks with two contracts, eight, eight ticks each, right? Two get scaled out uh, and stopped at even, and I get one winner, okay? One full loss, one winner, two break evens. Uh, then that one winner only needs to be 28 ticks to get me an average tick expectancy of three ticks per trade, right? So three ticks times four trades, 12, plus the 16 from the stop out, 28. And that's only one winning trade out of four. Uh, that's not even a two-hour trade, right? So uh, if I'm able to add on and scale out just one time before hitting my target, that ought to do it. Uh, but the reason for this image, other than the fact that baseball season's right around the corner, is because of something FT recently discussed in one of our Stage 5 member AMA webinars regarding size and targets. All right, basically, the analogy is that home runs are exciting in both uh, baseball and trading, but, but not sustainable, um, unless you're a very small percentage of those players or traders. So uh, just like the team that was put together in the movie Moneyball, I'm interested in hitting small targets at a higher rate of success, and that's something that uh, I've been trying to work on lately, um, mostly because of that. But uh, kind of like another analogy is that Bruce Lee quote, something like, uh, don't worry about the guy who's practiced 10,000 kicks once, um, but who's practiced one kick 10,000 times, right? It makes sense. Um, so that leads into sizing up and this idea of conscious discomfort. So there's a great 
uh, chat with traders podcast from a couple weeks ago uh, in which the host Aaron Fifield interviews this trader by the name of Brannigan Barrett. Uh, if you listen to it, uh, if you haven't listened to it, you should just check it out. I think it's like episode 114 or 15 or so, but uh, either way, he does a great job of explaining the importance of just pushing yourself both purposefully and deliberately uh, to some level of discomfort no matter what it is you're doing because that's where the magic happens and those are the moments where you find out a little bit more about yourself. So uh, these examples of prevailing through discomfort uh, on this slide obviously weren't self-imposed, um, but these gentlemen were each forced to consciously defy some level of distress and uh, they certainly speak to the greatness that can come out of facing some type of anguish. So uh, one of the ways in trading to healthily push yourself up is uh, by sizing up. And when you've become contented with trading one and two lots, it's time to raise the ante a little bit. Uh, and that's the idea. So uh, that's where I am currently. I've bumped it up a little this week, and I'm trading four lots and scaling twos. And you can bet your ass it's uncomfortable. Uh, I can already tell that it's made me complacent in adding back on after getting scaled out. Uh, because I'm emotionally attached to the value of trading the higher dollar amount. Uh, so, you know, how can I use that? Next week, one of my goals will be to just push. Uh, you know, if the market's moving in my direction, I want to make sure I get at least one scale in on uh, like 66% of my winners or something like that. You know, I'll have to see what this week's review looks like uh, for those numbers, but you get the idea. And then uh, my fourth goal in regards to leaving a runner uh, with my last contract, right? Uh, I've heard several traders talk about holding a runner after they've hit their targets for the day, but uh, until what? Like a, a certain time, uh, the close of the session? Why am I all of a sudden basing a trade exit on time when everything else has been based on price and volume? So uh, while some of you S5 folks might recognize that question today at one, but uh, it's something that I'm trying to work on now. And uh, to, to hold this last contract as a runner, but more of a, a mental stop than as a target. What I mean by that is, uh, for example, if I'm long and I see a, a, a lower high and then a cross below a prior swing low, then I'm out. Uh, just price action based, I guess. Uh, at least that's the goal for this week anyways. So. Uh, that the, the condition to this goal is that the exit must not be based at all on emotion, uh, as in uh, just because the market runs up eight points and I'm happy to take profits there because it's a lot of money, emotion, uh, that's not a good enough reason in itself to take profits. So uh, just like baseball, trading is 90% mental and the other half is technical. And uh, so here's how that day played out. This is a quiet day, man. Uh, a two-tick Renko chart for the whole session. And this is really appealing to my desire for everything to fit beautifully onto an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Um, but uh, let's walk through it. Okay, so we've got this, we've got this open uh, right on the edge of value in range. And we test down towards the prior volume point of control, which I expect to act as type of a magnet um, early on. So we move down. We get a pullback here, and uh, and then looks like a continuation lower. And because we get the, another rejection there for about five ticks, I go ahead and say the 77 half level is my uh, opening swing low. Uh, so this this little tick further after we get this bounce up and another push down counts as my extension to the downside. Okay, so now I want to see what happens to the upside. And as we move up we get a lower high and this is very telling of what the market is accomplishing. We've moved up and we found sellers uh, lower than, than uh, they were able to get right off of the open here. And buyers were, uh, just didn't have the conviction uh, to push higher. So as we get a rotation down, further extension to the low side, that's more conviction that uh, there are confirmation that uh, sellers are, are in control here. And we do get a test of this, um, prior volume point of control again. So I'm expecting that to bounce on the first attempt and then to accept, which is exactly what happened. So as soon as we get back to the middle of this range and I see a little bit of help and book map and something to lean on here, I'm short with my four contracts uh, from around the mid here. Now, 
uh, it, it rolls back over and I get my first scale out. That scale out is not based on anything except for the prior price action. This prior swing low, I want one tick ahead of this low because I'm expecting this continuation to be further. So I get that scale out, which moves my theoretical average up eight ticks. Uh, so where are we here? 78 half or so. So I'm looking at 80 half, right about, right about the high of the day is where my theoretical average is now. That's where my wrong point is. Excuse me. So uh, this rolls over, get my, get my scale out, theoretical average moves up. Uh, we get a chop here. We're putting in more volume at the lows. Uh, we get another move up. And we have the developing volume point of control, which acts as uh, a little bit of resistance. And we have the, the VWAP above. We have the mid. And this is all, uh, oh, this is a fresh mid because we've got new lows. And we see it start to roll over. I can add on somewhere in here. Um, and as I add on there, I'm looking for the next level to scale that out again. And the next level I can see where buyers might step in is this uh, prior value area low. That's what this is. This is the first standard deviation uh, of the volume for this day. And so this is the, the value area low. So I want to front run that by three ticks. This is 75 quarter, so I'm looking for 76, and we get that immediately. That's actually where the uh, volume point of control for this day ended up. Um, and so I get another scale out. And that pushes my theoretical average. That's, that's a lot of fun. When you see that scale out and that second scale out happen, that theoretical average, man, just bolts up. And uh, of course, I'm not going to wait for it to get all the way back there to, to be out. I'm still wrong, uh, basically above the mid here on these shorts or higher swing highs. So as that happens, uh, we do get this slow churn kind of lower. Um, but for the most part, uh, there's there's nowhere else really for me to get in. I mean, we get a pullback to this zipper. That might have been an area to get short. Uh, we get another pullback to the the initial balance low, the first hour's low. That might have been an area to, to, to aggressively put one on, which is what I want to do. You know, I want to get aggressive here, but I wouldn't add two here. I put one here just in case it were, were to continue higher, and uh, I can add another one up here later if I need to. But uh, the ultimate target here, or the uh, my second hypothesis target two, is this prior low a day, plus three ticks. Everything's plus three ticks. So 73 half, I'm looking for 74 quarter, and it happens to be right where the overnight volume point of control is, and uh, that has a high percentage of being hit. So that's a great spot for me. <clears throat> and that's where I take profits. So I have one contract left. I took out one so I can leave a runner. Okay, and as that happens, uh, buyers step in and push up for this five-point rotation, the largest rotation of the day so far, and uh, impulsive move back through the mid. And as we start to rotate back down, now I know where my wrong point is, and that's this line. I don't want to see, after this higher low, a higher high. And so as this moves up in the continuation move of this five-point impulse, that's where I'm out, and I'm flat. Okay, so as that happens, uh, immediately as we get this, this continuation higher, now I'm looking for longs um, for a couple reasons. I mean, we're, we're on this side of the mid, so I'm expecting it to hold. Uh, we've, we've put in a lot of volume down here, and we haven't really tested above yet. Uh, so all of this, all of these prior uh, areas that we've tested can be uh, used as support now. And also, we now have a neutral day. We've tested the initial balance low. We've tested the initial balance high. And there's a very small uh, probability that we will close below uh, the initial balance low after having tested that one first. Uh, so uh, most often, it will either continue above the initial balance high or land somewhere in between. But um, very uncommon for it to, to do this. So I would have been looking here for a long. But uh, we get this flush down through, which happens pretty quickly. And uh, there was just, there's nothing in the order flow uh, to suggest that uh, I should have been uh, getting in here uh, as an entry. So, <clears throat> and also, I mean, this, this, this line here, this, between this gray band and this white band, this is 3.30 p.m. <clears throat> so one of my 
rules is that I don't trade after 3.30 p.m. If I have uh, a trade to manage, that's fine, but I don't add on anymore and I don't enter. So all of this is kind of happening at the same time. Um, so I, I stayed off of that one and it uh, looks like we would have had a nice, uh, you know, entry for shorter after that. But, uh, you know, again, that's after my my time anyways. So uh, not much to work with, but enough to get one trade on. And that's all it really takes. So now the real question is, how does this methodology translate over a day that looks like this, right? Yikes, uh, just looks like a mess. And uh, I've heard many traders talk about volatility as a good thing because it leads to more opportunities. But uh, be careful there because if you don't really have your discipline and self-awareness under control, the excitement of this type of market only creates more opportunities to become emotional and more opportunities to lose money. Uh, so it's really important to be in control here and just take a few deep breaths and just slow down. Uh, even if I miss a trade, I can't become emotional about it because it's going to affect my next trade. And uh, again, with more opportunities, I can afford to be picky. So in this seemingly erratic market, I can actually pass on more trades than I could in the lower volatility market because they don't take all day to pan out. So uh, this type of behavior was very intimidating for me uh, at first. Uh, it's, it's fast. It uh, changes direction. It doesn't sit long enough in an area for me to think about my entry, uh, which is why it's very important for me to anticipate my next trade while the market is forming and especially my targets and my wrong area. So uh, with that being said, you know, let's get back to the real question. How do I trade this market differently than the prior sleepy market example? And uh, the answer is I don't, and I'm explicit in that. Uh, I don't have the pricing structure or the mentality or skill set to just start scalping. Um, I, 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 I do have to continually remind myself that just because I'm seeing something that is indicative of the market going one direction or the other does not make it a valid setup. Um, so just because there are more opportunities doesn't mean they are good opportunities. And uh, the more opportunities they are, despite the excitement of this rushing market, the more patient I have to be. Uh, be uh, but, you know, my trading is exactly the same. I'm constantly asking myself, what is the market doing? Uh, is there an impulse move that might see a pullback, or uh, is it a continuation move, which is more likely to see correction next? Uh, I'm looking for areas of consolidation or zippers and how the market is reacting at those prices. And this is all just an inner monologue uh, and external monologue in my uh, trade log. But uh, what does this lower high and lower low indicate? Uh, where in the order flow are the large players? How is price reacting at my levels of interest? Uh, so then when I have a good idea of what the market's doing and I see an opportunity to become involved, uh, I look for an area with some backup and a sign from the order flow to enter. But the key here really is forcing myself to be even more patient and more choosy than usual, um, despite all of these opportunities. So, uh, and one simple way that I can do that, a really simple way to just kind of calm this all down, as soon as I recognize that it's moving with some gusto, is to just take this from a two tick Renko to a three tick Renko chart. And uh, that's a pretty obvious thing to do, but look how much cleaner that looks. And uh, that simple change takes a lot of anxiety out of watching it unfold so quickly and kind of calms me back down to an emotional level where I can trust myself. So uh, as trivial as this may seem, you know, it has the effect of repairing my emotional state. And that's a big deal, right? I mean, look at this next to this is a lot, they're a lot more similar than, uh, this is just, that scares me, man. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I'm not going to make you sit through, uh, another explanation where, you know, you get where, where this information comes from by now. Uh, this is my homework sheet for yesterday morning, uh, a day after that 40 point trend day down on big volume. Um, so I'm just going to pop back and forth to this while we're looking at book map, uh, in the same sense that I would be peeking down at it on my desk as the day plays out. Uh, but the main thing to notice right off the bat is that I've accounted for 20 points of range here. 
uh, on each hypothesis as we're starting to get more volatility. I mean, we've only seen one day of it so far, so I'm a little bit weary about it. Um, but yeah, I think 20 points is pretty good here. Um, so I don't know. Let's let's uh, let's go to Bookmap. Let's check it out. Okay, so here we are. The market's about to open, and uh, you can see I've already put in the opening swing high and the opening swing low here, uh, just to go ahead and have it on my chart, so I don't have to do it as we're as we're going through here. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and play it out. And uh, let's see, speed it up just a touch here. All right, so we open, and uh, the first thing we notice is this volume is still here. Uh, this is this is um, you know it's moving, and as we test down, um, let me zoom into this a little bit. I'm constantly changing the scale of this pretty much all day long. I'm using that that mouse wheel is is uh, really getting its getting its money's worth. But here you see we open and push down. And uh, this liquidity on the bid stepped aside. And so all of a sudden, we know that the next time this tested, it's likely to be pushed through. And that's exactly what happened. And uh, this liquidity was right at the prior low of the day. So as soon as I see this, I already know that we're likely to start trading outside of prior range. And I want to see if we start accepting down there or if uh, we get buyers protecting and start to push back inside for longs. Okay, so uh, that's where my head's at. And immediately, well, not immediately. I mean, we're going 16 times speed here. Let me slow it down. Uh, but we do get that push right back in. And uh, we see, you know, down here we had still some interest, a lot of volume going off here uh, on the bid. But as we retested that level, uh, we, and, you know, that confirms that this is the opening swing low for me. But uh, kind of they're, they're not as interested down here anymore. And then we see somebody step in here uh, with liquidity on the offer. And get a couple icebergs in here and we start moving higher. So as we move higher, we make a higher high than this uh, high on the opening print here. And so I want to see, I mean, this, this already tells me that buyers seem to be in control. We've traversed this entire range and pushed to a new high. And now we have the opening swing high as we start to get a rotation lower. And we do see a little bit of, uh, you know, sellers starting to pull here. And then they get a little bit more aggressive. Uh, pull, but still they, they're, they're showing here. So now we know this is likely fake liquidity. And now as we pull down, I want to see extension. The opening swing high is in. The opening swing low is in. Now I'm just waiting to see which side we get that extension to. I'm not acting. I just want to know. So that's twice that we've tested this level without uh, three times now where the liquidity pulled, but uh, the buyer's just exhausted. So we'll see if we get a push through, and we do. Uh, and now there was a quick double top. We pushed right through it, and now we've tested the overnight high. So the statistic that we're going to test, uh, you know, 97% chance that we'll test either the overnight high or the overnight low throughout the regular trading hours, that's complete. And we're getting this pushed lower now. Now we have a couple uh, areas to kind of lean on here. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what we do uh, near this prior low a day. Um, because we've already, we've already pushed up into the prior low a day. So that tells me buyers, buyers rejected um, the idea that we're going to spend today below the prior range. Um, they, they show a force here, good volume. Uh, we get a higher high, we get a higher low, a higher high. Buyers are interested here. So now I'm looking for an area to get long. Now we see this push down, and it sweeps right through the middle of this area below uh, these little swing lows, so I step aside. I, I don't see anything in here for me to get long. And now my mind has changed. Um, and uh, I don't know if that's the right terminology here for it, but my read of the market has changed. Uh, try not to impart my own biases, but uh, we talked about this moving across the entire range. Now we found sellers at the overnight high to the tick, and we've pushed all the way through. 
straight down almost. Right, so now I'm looking for, there we, there we get it. I'm looking for sellers to step in at the prior low of the day because now they want it below. And, and that's exactly what happened. We have this beautiful little area to lean against. Whoops, wrong, uh, wrong tool there. Oops. Just a second. Rectangle. There we go. We've got this uh, beautiful area of consolidation right here to lean against. Uh, we had this little poke up. So I'm wrong at 38 half because you can see uh, more exhaustion there. And so that would have been a great place to get short. But uh, there's really just nothing here. I couldn't see anything to, to jump in. Like I said, the market's moving so quickly. I didn't have a chance to try to, you know, catch this as it went down. Um, you know, we didn't, we didn't spend much time here. And there's nothing in here telling me, you know, these guys are moving aside. All of this is, is moving aside. There's, you know, I would like to see him moving down as we got closer or, you know, something in here getting brighter. I didn't see anything to get short and that's fine. That's one of these instances where I could see an area that the market might turn around, but I don't need to get involved. And I don't need to be emotional about missing this. Uh, that's the, the, the fear of missing out, right? I missed this, this short opportunity, and now we're on our way back down. My scale out would be 35 quarter, and I'm, I, I try as hard as I can not to think about this while this is happening, because that's just gonna mess with me emotionally. There's no benefit to it. Uh, so we start to move lower. We're accepting lower. We're putting in quite a bit of volume down here. Now, we did get a quick uh, higher low, but then we got a lower high again, right in front of this exhaustion and push lower again. So uh, we've got a little channel here setting up, um, but you know, there you go again. We get liquidity here that's backing off, liquidity here that's backing off, more fake liquidity. Uh, it's hard in this, uh, for me anyway, in this low vol or high volatility market uh, to make more sense of this uh, kind of gray uh, with just these very few uh, areas of white. And I have my, my, uh, my brightness turned pretty far down. I, I want to see the large players here, but it's just, it's kind of muddy. You know, there's not much to, to take away from these areas right now. So, so far, I'm still not seeing anything. Uh, that prior low day trade would have been great because I would have got my scale out here. I'm looking for my MCLVN as my next target, plus three ticks. I would have gotten my target here. So, I'd be sitting real pretty and happy. Uh, looking for more areas to scale in and out if I was short, but I'm not. And I have to erase that from my mind. Otherwise, it's going to cause me to make a mistake. So we've got, let's see, let's see if I can. We've got an impulse move, a pullback, and somewhat of a continuation. But again, on a higher time frame, this is also an impulse move. So we've got a lower, uh, a fresh low, so we've got a virgin mid, which now lines up with the MC volume point of control and the prior high of day. So I'm looking in this area for continued shorts. Uh, sellers seem to be in control. Um, I, I expect them to step right back in at this prior low a day, even though it's a second test here, uh, because we have a fresh mid. Um, we've got the session VWAP is right here, so just below, uh, right around 37, which also, you know, is showing how much volume is going off down here. So let's let's speed this up a little. I think we're about to hit it, so I'll let it rip. So it comes up here. And this is what I see, all right? We've got a ton of volume coming in all of a sudden on a push up, all right? We've got uh, this liquidity on the offer that's pulled. Um, you know, we've got a couple little items down here of liquidity on the bid that's chasing, chasing this market up. All of this is saying don't get short, right? But of course, if you were concerned that you missed this prior low day trade and you're thinking about, oh man, how much money that would have been so much money there and then I would have caught my, my target there and I uh, would have made more money there. How much money is that? And you're counting up the profit and loss and now you're saying, 
I don't care that this liquidity is stepping out of the way. I don't care that this is a huge push up. I don't care how much volume is right here. I don't care that there's orders on the bid moving higher. I want to get in short. So that's what I did. I got in short, FOMO, and that's why it's brutal. And this didn't take long to, uh, to knock me out, okay? So now, at least that's a race from my mind, and, uh, you know, I, I paid for it. I paid for that lesson. So now we're seeing this move higher. And now that I'm out of this trade and uh, I'm not looking for shorts anymore, at least, I'm not necessarily looking for longs quite yet, um, but now I have more of a clear head. Let's see. We get this push up. This is what I'm looking at here. We have a double top as we move up and we tag the overnight high 42 level again, um, which uh, the statistic here is that if, uh, you know, we have... Uh, price that hits the same high or the same low 15 minutes apart uh, and moves at least 12 ticks uh, between uh, that it has a very high probability of being taken out throughout the session. So I, I'm expecting, I'm looking to the high side now. And uh, so I need something to lean against. And uh, so this is what I have. I have this prior, not because it's a prior entry, it just happens to be there. But let's put another rectangle here. I've got this area. And so I know that if I get a test down into this area and I see uh, buyers start to step in, which that is just noise there. It's not, I'm just pointing here. But um, if I see a reason to get long here, I at least can lean on this. I have something here. Now I have the prior low of the day that I, I'm still playing against because now I want, uh, I'm expecting buyers to protect now that, now that they've shown a little bit of strength. Uh, now I know I'm, I'm wrong really at 37.50. That's my wrong point. So I, I could move that up a, up a tick. But, um, you know, also, I'm, I'm pretty aggressive here. You know, this, this entry is really aggressive. I wanted to see this prior low of the day and the mid. It's still the same mid, right, because uh, we've got the same high. We didn't break any highs. Um, but I'm expecting this, this to hold up. But as I see this start to rotate, there's a little bit more emotion that goes off. And uh, this is telling me, this is a little bit more fear that, you know what, I've got a stop on the day, I've got a, 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 a break even on the day, and um, this looks like a good, a good long. I don't want it to leave without me because uh, my daily P&L, right? So, you know, and this is all something that this replay mode in Bookmap is great for because I'm, I'm seeing this uh, outside of myself while I was in the trade and doing this and that way I can evaluate it and I can take the steps to to curb it in the future. Uh, so here we go. Uh, bad habit here again to to chase the market. I chased it up as it pushed in. I mean again it's it's hard to catch these uh, without more support uh, from the order flow but there's a reason for that. It's because there wasn't support from the order flow which is why we fell back down in here. Okay so as we fell back down uh, I got a uh, a low here, so I know I'm wrong because it's exhausted here. We got to get buyers to step in. You know, I'm only giving it about six ticks of six or seven ticks of space, uh, which again I would have loved to have gotten in at this this beginning of a rotation up due to this volatility, or uh, sorry, uh, liquidity here. You know, that's more more of a sign. We've tested down here, uh, sellers exhausted right at the lower end here again, so and and we get a little bit of interest. Uh, from buyers. So this was my, my entry, but I wasn't patient enough. Uh, I got too aggressive here. And uh, but that's okay. Watch it play out. And uh, as this moves up, there we go. Get a scale. And I can move my stop. I'm still wrong at new swing lows. I mean, you know, technically I'm not wrong at the prior low a day. I'm wrong maybe a point or so below. You know, give it a little bit of space here. Um, but I'm trying to be really aggressive here. And, and that uh, is something that I should evaluate for the future in this high volatility market is possibly uh, taking a little bit smaller size with a little bit more room. Uh, but currently, you know, this is it. I'm trading exactly the same way. And I just want to see, I, I kind of, you can walk away now. All right, my, my target's in. And it's up here at uh, 45.75. What was that? Let me see what this was. Let's go back. We'll look at it together. Here's my hypothesis. Uh, hypo one, target one is 46.50. Uh, the HVN just in, uh, from 
you know, yesterday's from yesterday's trend. Ah, this is the wrong one. Let's see. Okay, well, you can't really see it here, but uh, we've got a low volume node here, and this is where the volume point of control ended up after yesterday's trend down at the high volume node at lows, uh, but the next high volume node up was at this level, this, uh, this 4650. So front run that by three ticks, and that's where you get 4575 right here, okay, and that goes in you know, pretty soon, pretty early, because I want to front run. I want to be the first one in there. And so now I'm looking for areas to scale in. And as this moves down this much, you know, I'm, I can't afford to add on this close to my, my theoretical average here. So what I would have loved to see happen is for this to make a new high, which is actually, this is a triple high now. We've got another, another tag of this overnight high. Where are we here? Oh, not yet. We do get a triple high though. And I would have loved to see, was that the third one? Am I confused? Yeah, that was the third one. Okay, so here's your triple high. Uh, this one's the one uh, just after 9.45, after the, the push up, overnight high tag, overnight high tag, overnight high. So now we've got a pretty high chance. I mean, if you were to look at this, uh, this on a, a, a wider scale here, uh, that kurtosis is, is just falling off because of, um, you know, tagging this level, this overnight high so many times. So we're more likely to, to get back up there. But I don't see anywhere that I can really add on. There's nothing in here that tells me, I mean, we get a zipper here, we kind of get a push down to it, but not really, you know, and then we, we just take off. And there's that volume coming back in. Uh, as as uh, buyers become aggressive, or uh, oh, we here we here we move up, and I'll show you what I was looking at here. Okay, I've got two contracts left here, and as we move up, this is another five and change, maybe six point rotation up, right? And uh, we move up. We've got aggressive buyers still moving in. And then uh, we've got sellers starting to pull here. So as this comes up and starts to rotate down, I mean, that was 32 times speed, but it is easier to see a little bit in, in real time. It starts to roll over. Anything over uh, four and a half points, I'm looking at, you know, where is the top of this? Where should I be taking profits? And as this starts to roll over, uh, everybody pulls here. And I'm not that interested in, in taking profits, but we get this higher high and kind of a stall here. Uh, of this move, and it starts to rotate down. So now I put in to take take some profits. I want to see it, you know, start to rotate down. I want to take profits because I want to get in somewhere in here. I want to add on somewhere around the middle of this move, maybe, you know, right at that 42 level where we hit that triple overnight high. Maybe that'll be uh, something will show up here. Maybe um, you know, we'll come all the way down here and test this liquidity and they'll move up or they'll hold or something. And anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in adding on. So I want to take some profits here. Uh, the, the error I think that I made here was pulling this order. Uh, I wanted to, to leave this runner, right, that we've been talking about that uh, has, has kind of got me confused lately. And I, I, I got greedy here. I said, if it's going to go up here, you know, I still, I want to add more on to this trade. I don't want this trade to be over yet. I still think we're going to go higher. Uh, something else that's in the back of my mind is that huge trend day down yesterday. You know, maybe we're going to correct that today and go all the way back up. So, you know, I'm greedy and I hold on to this runner instead of taking my, my singles here and closing this trade and, uh, you know, working, working the next trade and capitalizing on the maximum uh, favorable excursions. So there, I would have been I would have been out of this trade. It's a beautiful trade. Instead, you know, I'm still not really wrong in this trade until all the way down here. So as price moves this far away from where I think I might be wrong, you know, basically this is my risk now. And that's just silly. So we I got to find figure out a way uh, to to change this. So a couple of ideas to do that were to either leave this in 
you know, if it were to continue up without a rotation, now now this is like a eight or nine point move, right, before we get a rotation down and we get even further. So that, that should have been taken, you know, take the money and run. Or uh, we've got a couple more opportunities here. As we see this start to rotate down, uh, we've got we've got our rotation point here, our new low, right? And we get a push up and we get a lower high. So now I could move this up to lower lows and then I know that's another wrong point and I can still wait for it to move down here and enter another trade. I need to stop worrying about, uh, you know, holding on to this. Just greed. So as we move a little bit forward here, we do end up getting a lower low. Even though you see this aggression start to come in, they're just kind of, this looks like market maker activity as it just kind of follows the market around. And then that's it. I should be at, at you know, at worst, I should have taken off profits there. Uh, instead, I wait for it to come all the way back around and, and tell me I'm an idiot. Um, but, uh, you know, at least it's a, it's a successful trade and it's a successful day um, because I'm learning from this. And uh, I, I think that's a, that's a really important part of the process is this review, right? So uh, let's see, let's go back. There we go. So uh, that's it. Uh, Bruce, what do you got? Okay. Uh, yeah, a few questions here. Um, let's see, Francisco has a lot for you. Um, cool. Judy uh, as well. And uh, yeah, get your questions in uh, for Daniel. And uh, we'll uh, start answering these. So uh, Judy was asking about uh, the midpoint, how you find the midpoint each day. Um, uh, is it the ah. point from the RTH trading? Yes, it is. Uh, it is. So other than bookmap, even though I'm trading directly on bookmap, this is my, my key, not even the three tick, I mean currently the three tick Renko, but uh, this is my key chart. Uh, this is Investor RT and it plots this uh, light blue line and uh, this just comes straight from Futures Trader 71. This, this is the middle of the range starting uh, at the open, as soon as we move down, you, you see the blue line move down. And as we extend range higher, now it's it's the high of the day minus the low of the day divided by two, right, constantly. And it just plots it automatically. So I can watch this chart and see, oh, we're pushing down to the mid, you know, and I can look in, uh, at, at book map and say, well, it's around 4075 right now or, or wherever it is. And uh, you use that in confluence with um, any other any other areas. So now, you know, even this bounce here, this, this mid touch here has confluence with the opening swing high uh, with that triple tagged overnight high and, you know, could be a possible place to, to look for, for entries long. Okay. Uh, let's see, Francisco had a, a bunch of comments about it, uh, different things, but we'll get into the uh, one here on the technicals. Um, why didn't you take the opening swing low uh, around uh, 9.33 that day? Uh, why didn't I take this for a long? Yeah, I mean, in Bookmap, it, um, there was a little double bottom there, I remember. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's check it out. Why didn't I take this long? Oh, here. Yes, that's his right? question, yeah. Because I need to see the opening swing develop first. Before I make any moves as part of my plan, I want to see those market on open orders go in and uh, how, how they form is important, where they form is important, and which side is crossed after that. Uh, and that's, that's where my day really starts, is, is this extension. Now I'm looking to see what happens. Uh, so, you know, this just, uh, this will, you know, this first low where buyers step in and the first high where sellers step in, that's the opening swing low. And uh, after, after I get an extension one way, I want to see how far the other side can push. Okay. And if they get, they get through that, that middle area and any areas of uh, what could be support, if they get down to the downside, now I know that sellers have been found. 
and that's that's where I can start start my day trading. Uh, but I need more information than that. I can't just as this moves down, you're just uh, catching the old falling knife, right? To try to to try to get in here. I mean, it's it's very aggressive, and uh, of course you could just put your stop in below that, and that might work out. Uh, but uh, but it, it doesn't work out for me uh, as far as you know the uh, the amount of times that I would try to catch this area versus uh, getting stopped out of it, especially on like a driving type of day, like the trend day. You could just be trying to fade that all day long, and that'll ruin your whole your whole trading career. Um, but even even when it comes to these reversal levels, uh, let's see. So where's my hypothesis for this day. Here we go. So uh, we have 38 quarter and 46 half. Those are the areas that I'm looking at as extensions of the opening swing. 46 half and 38 quarter. Right. So as we move down, we've gone through my 38 quarter area where I thought um, buyers would step in. They didn't step in there. They pushed lower. So now I want to see how far how far are they going to go? I'm not just going to front run it. Now, if it goes down to my levels and I do see uh, some buyers stepping in, uh, then that's that's an area that I might look to uh, as far as a, a pullback or whatever. But uh, I know I'm not interested in, in front running this or getting in here. I want to see how far they can push. Okay. Yeah, and Francisco is just following up and saying that uh, yes, uh, he would have taken it in his in his opinion. Just uh, it was clear for him. Uh, but um, uh, this answers another question, Francisco, um, that you're asking about um, in opportunities uh, in his trading plan. He's being just very disciplined, and he's following his plan. Uh, and that wasn't a part of his plan. And that was uh, described in, in his answer there. So just uh, try, try uh, sorry, Daniel, I'm just trying to um, no, that's exactly uh, right. a answer um, uh, his previous question as, as in the same moment here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if I'm not following my plan, then what am I doing? You know, I need, I need something. Everything's a data set. Uh, you know, if, if, if something happens and I, I get stopped out trading my plan, uh, you know, like we talked about last time, even either uh, my plan's wrong or my entry was wrong, uh, but I can figure out which one it was if I trade my plan and I can uh, adjust it, my plan or my hypothesis or whatever it is in order to fix that. If I if I trade outside of my plan, then I don't have anything to work with. I don't have a, you know, that's just a, a random trade for me. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see another question. Carlos is asking, how do you consider the initial swing information RTH? Uh, how do you define the the uh, initial swing low? I guess. Yeah. So that's uh, uh, like we were just saying is <clears throat> as soon as I see uh, if the market's moving down, I want to see the area where buyers step in, and this is kind of arbitrary. I mean, you can you can. Uh, we, we talk about this a lot of times in the in the chat room uh, because it's not so obvious sometimes. And even though, you know, sellers stepped in right off the bat here and started pushing down, that gives this cause for a possibility, this uh, 40 half level, of being the opening swing high because that's where sellers stepped in. But as we move up, then it, uh, if we were to uh, roll over here short of this uh, 40 half level, then that would confirm that's the opening swing high for me. Uh, but uh, since we pushed higher, this is where sellers stepped in, and that's now my opening swing high. And that's just, uh, it's just an eyeball kind of thing. Um, you know, this got tagged twice, so that kind of confirms it for me there. Uh, this rolled over to the midpoint, so that kind of confirms it there. But, you know, some days it's easier to, to pick out than others. Okay, how do you handle hits but no fills on your initial entry uh, when you decide to get in uh, at a worse price? Um, I usually leave it, and, you know, it's really frustrating when I don't get filled, uh, but of course, you know. Um, but if I see, you know, I might give myself two ticks of space on either side. Uh, either on the entry side and when taking profits. I give myself about two two ticks. 
So, you know, if, if this comes in, which, you know, was actually to my detriment on this, on this trade, let's see, let me just, on this trade here, because I, I chased it. And I mean, I say one or two ticks, we're talking about, this is, this is 38 and I chased it all the way up to 39 quarters. So, you know, this is, this is a, this goes down in my book as an error. Uh, even though it ended up being, uh, the trade ended up working out, you know, the real trade, like I said, was to wait for my level to be tagged and watch what happens there. And as we saw that rotation, that's where I want to get in. Okay, so I'm not going to front run it at the prior low today, 38, but if I see it start to roll, start to rotate, let's see if we get any more insight here. Not really here. But uh, as I see that start to rotate up, and I see these guys come in, there you go, there's a little bit of help. Uh, then boom, I'm going to put it here. And as I, you know, if it touches, touches, and I see, you know, a big green dot, I might move it up another tick, but that's enough. And I don't, I really don't want to chase it any more than that. So I'm hoping to get filled at least here. And if I don't, then I've missed it. And that happens sometimes. It's, uh, you know, I know some, some people like to use market orders for that. Um, that's just, just the way that I do it. Okay. Let's see, Kurt is asking, uh, you have a style that uses several small targets, uh, target trades on the way to your bigger picture targets. Have you looked at the expect expectancy for each individual trade separated by the small and larger targets or looked uh, at it if you didn't scale in or out? Yes, and uh, that was something uh, that I went back and forth on for a really long time. And, uh, you know, I would... I would look for um, a prior strategy several years ago was to just go all in, all out uh, to the closest target and then look to the next trade and go all in, all out because then I'm maximizing the amount of money that I'm making. If I can go, if I can take this from here to here on 100 contracts, that's great. But I'm also risking 100, you know, the same amount on the other side. So uh, scaling in and out was something that I couldn't wrap around my head for so long. I know uh, FT71 was probably sick of me at the time asking him about scales, and I don't understand why this is beneficial. Uh, but it is completely in order to fund the trade. So if, I, if I'm in here, in long, and I get this scale out, my theoretical average, my zero line is 38. And uh, I know you guys understand that now. But So now this is where my entry and my stop are. So, you know, had had this been a better trade, let's say, uh, and I caught it down here where I should have, then my my uh, theoretical average is in an area where the market hasn't even gotten to yet. That's my entry. And so as we push higher, those scales in and scales out are now my actual trade. And I'm using the risk uh, mitigation from this scale out in order to uh, keep me from losing any money uh, as that trade continues in the direction that I anticipated. Uh, the levels that I'm scaling out at uh, are, you know, I kind of, I, I would like to hold something for a longer term picture, but uh, you know, like we saw in this trade, if, if this gets up to even my very first target, uh, I should have taken this and that's it. And that, that whole trade is done. Uh, even though it only got got to this very first target, right? We didn't we didn't see these these other uh, at least until later in the day. I don't think we saw them at all. Fifty four and fifty nine quarter, and that's only I mean that's my first target. I'm not. I, I would have loved to hold something there, and that's what I was thinking at the time. Uh, but in retrospect, and in my my goals for moving forward, I need to I need to be able to see that, you know, it's okay to take profits here. But if it moves up here, take the take the profits. There's no reason to to let this continue running, and I think that's what that's what you're getting at. Okay. Uh, let's see. Chris is asking about the, if you could show your contrast settings. Hmm. Yeah, and that's uh, you know that's something that you hear all the time in in webinars, and I'll be glad to to show those to you. But uh, I fiddle with these every day, and I don't have a special. Uh, as much as a perfectionist as I am, I'd love to have an Excel file that says my favorite contrast settings uh, for a certain type of volume are 52%, you know, 61%, and 13%, or whatever. But um, this is something that I'll move back and forth, uh, 
you know, just to see, let's see, let's move it up to where we were here. You know, I'll, I'll as you zoom in and out, of course, uh, the brightness is going to change. So really, you know, this is all kind of doesn't doesn't matter so much. Um, as I as I zoom out and we have higher liquidity back here, you know, this this gets dimmer, uh, you know, and on and on. Uh, but I do like to try to keep, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, a, a pretty big difference or a higher contrast, I suppose, between the whites and the blacks. So, uh, okay. No, I mean, that's a good point. And, and, you know, we go over in the, in the webinars, um, you know, every, every day more or less that you will need to fiddle with it. And the, the reason being is that, um, it changes. I mean, we don't know what it's going to be. Uh, it's, it's, th th think of it like, like a, it's an image in, a, in Photoshop or something. And you just adjusted your picture for perfectly the way that you will, the way that you like it. You got your settings all nicely set. And and then all of a sudden a really bright object is added into your picture all of a sudden. Uh, that, that's that's what happens here. So you will need to adjust for it. Um, so I just wanted to, to, to follow up with that point. Um, yeah, good enough. Uh, okay, uh, just a, a few more questions and we got to wrap it up. Um, yeah, sure. Philip is asking also about the volume dot settings, if you could show. Oh yeah, I mean, again, this is something that uh, that I play around with, especially depending on the time of day. Uh, I do leave it on the smart setting for the dots clustering, and I leave my transparency alone. But uh, I, I, I like to see every single trade that happens, and uh, you know, I know that a lot of people like to change that to see uh, only where the bigger players are, and I understand that. <clears throat> but I want to see uh, what happens at the tips. And that's something that I talk about a lot uh, in my, you know, to myself in uh, in my trade notes. Let's see if we can find a good example here, because if we start seeing a lot of accumulation, I mean, well, not really. But I want to see, like, if you know, for example, there's there's no trades happening here, and we see the greens just lighting up the uh, the best offer all the way up here. Then I know, you know, there's still a lot of interest there and it's most likely algorithmic uh, accumulation especially when you see the same space between uh, and again that's something that Bruce goes over every day in the webinars and uh, I definitely recommend to check those out okay um, there's a few, few more questions here I think um, I'm gonna have to, to, to wrap it up um, though and uh, you can uh, reach out to um, to Danny uh, on his uh, his Twitter if, if you don't mind uh, let's um, let me let me uh, grab the screen for just a moment. Are are you all finished there, uh, uh, Danny? Or um, yeah, 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 unless you like to show. Okay, so let me let me just uh, show his uh, his Twitter here. Um, okay, and and a few other things as well. So you can reach out to him here, um, and I'll put this into the chat for you guys. There you go. Okay, uh, and a few other things. So uh, uh, Danny's uh, previous uh, webinar was uh, you can you can find it. Oops, I'm sorry. Let's see where is it? Yeah, you can find it here under the February 2017 on the, our uh, our YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, I'll have it up here in the uh, March of 2017 here in, in just a moment, okay? So uh, give, give me about an hour or so. Uh, and uh, one more thing, uh, and I, I need to let you guys know this, uh, for uh, tomorrow, um, uh, we're having a, a webinar uh, with Jean-Marc. Uh, he is a scalper, uh, really interesting character. Uh, I, I just need to let you guys know um, he, uh, he doesn't speak English. Uh, or it's it's limited, uh, so um, uh, we'll, we'll be interesting to see how this goes. But uh, it, he's got some really interesting things to show. Um, but uh, I, I need to let you guys know about that. Okay, and uh, let's see. And the special we have going on at Bookmap, you can find it at Bookmap.com uh, here under the pricing tab uh, if you're interested. So there's a 33% discount, uh, and uh, that's on the quarterly 
uh, for every three months. Uh, but this is the new product here is for the, the yearly. So if you're if you want to get the extend that 33 discount um, for you know every month, uh, then then uh, go for the go for that yearly. Um, okay. All right, well, this is recorded. We'll be up uh, later uh, for you guys uh, to check out. And uh, uh, Danny, uh, thank you very much. Uh, e excellent job. Um, just yeah, yeah, uh, you know, thanks a lot. Um, you know, I, I just want to say thanks to everybody. You know, I, I really hope this information was helpful in one way or another, you know, whether that was, you know, help you gain a little bit more confidence as the market starts to pick up the pace or if you've learned that you never want to sit through me speaking for an hour again, I guess there's always a, a silver lining. Uh, no, but of course it, it's, it's really my pleasure to come on and share part of my journey for my friends here. And uh, I can't wait to see some of your webinars. I know each of you has something to offer that I could learn from. Uh, so yeah, but uh, thanks Bruce. Thanks to Sahi and FT and please hit me up on Twitter. Uh, let me know what you're struggling with. And like I said last time, let's, let's work together as a community, hone the skill set. Uh, this is our office. These are our peers. Uh, you know, we have to hold ourselves accountable for not following our trade plans, but, you know, I think it's really important that we also pat each other on the back when we have a breakthrough. So that's all I got. Uh, I really appreciate it. I hopefully, hopefully uh, do it again soon. Great. Thanks, Danny. Thanks. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye, everybody.